My name is Paul Mondano. I, I have made a series of videos to help you understand Asperger's. Why, why should you care? I'm an Asperger's adult with, an with a master's in educational psych. I have broken every theoretical limit, friendship, socially fitting in to a degree, and many of the rules that the DSM-5 say should never happen. Actually, officially, they wouldn't even identify, identify me as Asperger's because I'm too functional. That is a sad state of a diagnosis if a functional person loses their identity. Frankly, Asperger's is your neurology and who you are. It's in your brain. And that's, what I, that's why I care. I am tired of us getting judged socially and seen as a stereotype. We're as different from each other as we are from the neurotypical or normal individuals. And there's about time we had pride in who we are. That's what this series of videos is about. How to understand each other, how to be understood, how to adapt, not change who we are, and be proud of our historical contributions and how we made Silicon Valley a reality. That's what I want to offer to anyone who's interested. Services, mentoring, and a coming website as well. Asperger's is a uh, known for shadows known for misunderstandings, yet is assumed to be stereotypes. Sadly, the truth is far, far more complex. Asperger's is like shadows, which I am standing in. To learn the truth, we must make a journey from the shadows to semi-shadow to light. Until we do this, we will never understand the truth. There are also two sides of the truth. There's the rough version, and then there's the ideal version, which we are taught and told to believe. My name is Paul Bondano. I am an Asperger's adult with a master's degree in educational psychology. I have the ability and have learned to act normal enough to not stick out, obviously. That didn't change who I was, and frankly, I think I should not have to act a certain way to be accepted by society, yet that is the social norms we live in. It is something I will be discussing further. Also, why else should you take me seriously? I've gone through depression, ex uh, was thrown into special ed, given up on, labeled mentally retarded, ADHD, dyslexic, and given up on by fifth grade. So I know what it's like to be given up on and thrown into the trash from my own life. I also know what it's like to have a hero come in and deprogram me, a tutor. I also know the struggles of severe depression as well. Truth is, I'm a living example of everything the DSM-5, the psychology bible, says shouldn't exist. I shouldn't be able to adapt socially well as I do. Check. I shouldn't have the self-confidence I have. Check. I shouldn't be able to understand the social system and break it down. Check. I also shouldn't have the empathy and emotional awareness to have close friendships. Check. I've disproven every one of those things in my own life and have had many struggles and many people to thank to get there. That is why you should take me seriously and honestly question the social norms and examine them deeply. Because unless we do this, any advice or progress of any person in Silicon Valley who has made their life better with their own personal struggles and growth will not account to more than a stereotype and a startup myth. So, Asperger's people have made many important contributions. They gave us science, the Industrial Revolution, evolution, the transistor, and the computer, and the much vaunted Silicon Valley. Without Asperger's people, we would be living in a very different, very technologically backwards world. Yet, this, uh, this understanding is not widely accepted or known. Truth is, Asperger's people are key individuals who made the future that we look forward to and are present possible. There were others who helped Asperger's people. 
they are, they are known as neurodiverse, or people who, whose brains are wired differently, and they think in unique, creative, systematic, or unique ways. These people today have labels of dyslexia, ADHD, bipolar, amongst other labels. These people are just as important and make many important contributions. Neurodiverse people are just import, as just as important as Asperger's people to the future and the contributions of Silicon Valley. Steve Jobs, in fact, was dyslexic. I repeat, Steve Jobs was dyslexic. It's in his biography and his book, if you want to look it up. That is interesting, isn't it? A man who's dyslexic and creates a billion dollar company. Kind of cool. And yet his company fails without the neurotypical and the neurodiverse working together. Because the neurodiverse people aren't running the sales department or in the Apple stores doing the customer service. They're designing the, the neurodiverse people are designing the products which are sold at the store. And Apple wouldn't be worth I believe over two billion dollars right now if the neurotypicals had nothing to sell. And this goes throughout, this, this holds true throughout all of Silicon Valley. And that is why everyone should care. It's in your vested financial interest and technological development to have an alliance between neurodiverse and neurotypical. Because we need each other. Only then do we get Apple and billion dollar companies such as Google, which are immensely large, powerful, and interesting. That's what we get when we work together. Understanding Asperger's is just like understanding another language, except it's about thought and emotions instead of the words. For example, let's say I gave you a text in all Spanish. If you didn't read Spanish, you wouldn't get it. If you learn Spanish, you get it. Truth is, we need a translation from neurotypical or emotional or social thinking to rational system, systematic, neurodiverse thinking. A good example is, and a, and a misnomer is, people who are on the spectrum don't show enough emotion, they're cold and they're not emotional. Not true. We just don't express our emotions in the traditional, socially grand or obvious way. Often if we want to help you, we're not going to sit there and listen and reflect your words in, in reflective empathy. We're going to actually offer help and con concretely help you fix it. Because we're hearing that you want help and this is the solution and we're going to help you with it. Unfortunately, that gets often misinterpreted as bossy or insensitive. That's one example of misinterpretation. Another misnomer is that neurodiverse and Asperger's people often are assumed to like our differences and are proud of them. We are proud of them. We also don't like the drawbacks that come with them because we don't fit into the social system. We're like a square in a circle. Our thinking is different. We don't naturally, automatically see the social and automatically get it. We can learn it with conscious effort to turn the square to the circle, but we must have the support and awareness to learn it. Those are two examples of, of, of what we can do and what mistruths there are. Another key mistruth about us is we don't really care about friends and we don't want them and, our, and we struggle because we can't do it. Wrong. Often it's a struggle to find the skills to fit a square to a circle and we want friends as much as everyone else and belonging. Yet a struggle to fit the square to the circle creates conflict and eventually it gets too hard to try and we may want to give up or see it as pointless. That's what's going on. And we have many unique contributions to society. Understanding the differences in our perceptions and mindsets is the first step. These are only a few examples. In the future, 
we'll go over more videos about, about specifics of how to bridge these gaps and broad stereotypes and misinterpretations. I'm standing on a bridge over a stream to represent a real problem in society. There are so few bridges and role models for neurodiverse people out there. And this is a real problem. To cross the social rapids, we must have role models and belief and aspiration in who we are. This is like the shadows around me, pretty much pervasive. How many Asperger's or neurodiverse role models can you name? I can only name five and that's if I try. This lack of role models and aspirational figures creates a highly vulnerable group of neurodiverse people. We're taught and socialized from the moment we're born that we're different, that we don't get it. We're nerds, we're geeks, which fortunately we reclaim those words. We also get other nasty terms, retarded, socially inept, needy, high maintenance, and many other nasty terms for socially inept and clueless. These words are absolute BS. It's the real problem is understanding and teaching the neurodiverse person to understand. And that's why things are failing. That's the reason school is a brutal social playground where we get our social belief and pride beaten the crap out of us because we're not normal. We get bullied, double victimized, and suffer terribly. This is a tragedy that happens every day. Tragedy that, I hate to say it, has been correlated with school shootings. If you have a neurodiverse kid, there are solutions and I can help with this. This is why I'm being open about this and my own life and my own struggles. I was bullied, ostracized, and suffered severe depression in the past. I'm well aware of how bad it can get. And I want to help, be a role model, and to add another finger to the list to say, you have a role model and someone who gives a damn and cares. That's what matters. Hope and the future. This bridge should be lit. And that water won't be so scary. But right now it is because we have, we're, we're in the social shadows of misunderstanding, a place we can no longer afford to be.